So like I mentioned, this morning we launched a brand new series called River Life 2034. River Life 2034. Now, kiddos, anyone of you are, in th- are any one of you in third grade? Do we have any third graders in the room? I see Nate raise his hand. Nate, Nate definitely is the, the biggest third grader I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but third graders, in 10 years, you will be graduating high school. In 10 years, you will be 17, 18 year old, entering into the adult world. And so, River Life 2034, the goal for us this morning, the next three weeks, is to share with you a new mission for our church's future, for River Life's future, in serving the next gen and beyond. And so, our previous mission was hope, healing, and growth to the next gen beyond. And when River Life started 10 years ago, it was simply hope and healing to second gen Hmong. This morning, I want to introduce our new mission to us. And our new mission is this, that we are a next gen Hmong church experiencing God together. Let me say that again. Our new mission is, we are a next gen Hmong church experiencing God together. If it's easy, you can just summarize the idea that we experience God together. That is our mission. And so over the next few weeks, we will tease out each of these components uh, of why we think it's important to experience God together. But today, I felt like it'd be necessary for us to understand why we felt like it was necessary to change it in the first place. So like I mentioned about 10 years ago, River Life launched, River Life as a whole launched as a response to the growing numbers of second gen Hmong leaving the traditional Hmong churches for various reasons. Some left the traditional Hmong churches because they struggled with the language, while others felt like the Hmong church became more of a cultural preservation center instead of a movement bringing change and transformation according to Jesus and his promises to society. And again, reasons ranged from anywhere between those two or all in between. And so again, there was a lot of second gen Hmong leaving traditional church. Not only were second gen leaving the church, but many stopped, at least in my circle, many just simply stopped attending church. In general, many after stopping, uh, after um, stopped attending church, many just abandoned their faith in Jesus. They stopped believing in Jesus. And so Pastor Greg and Bumfo saw a need to reach the next gen. So they, along with our launch team, which include our very own Johan Pajar, strategically developed a mission to bring hope and healing to second gen Hmong. This helped pioneer a response that has been helpful to hundreds, including to many of us right here, right now, to stay faithful to Jesus. Now, unfortunately, this issue isn't isolated to just Hmong churches. Our Korean and Chinese American friends, uh, Korean and Chinese American um, churches and our Korean and Chinese American believers experienced this about 30 years ago, maybe even longer. And across all the churches in the United States, again, all the churches across the U.S., more than 70%, research says says that more than 70% 70 are plateaued, which means they stop growing or even declining in growth. Notably, back in 2019, Lifeway Research found that where 4,500 churches closed, only 3,000 new congregations started. And so there was a gap of about a quarter, 25% of the churches, um, clo- there was a gap of 25% churches that, that weren't filling in these spots that the churches were closed. And so this sparked a concern that if we have more churches that are closing and less churches that are opening, it, started, it sparked a concern of Christians weakening influence in the world, that if we have less churches, there's less impact in our world. And so with all these different stats about the Hmong experience, the Korean and Chinese American experience, the just general Christian experience, at least in the United States, I believe it begs us to think about what we can do differently so that we can be effective. And so when Pastor Greg came back from a sabbatical, he posed the question for the leadership team to think about. He asked us these questions. What will river life look like in 10 years? More importantly, what do we need to do to be effective at reaching the third and fourth gen Hmong as we have been with the second gen? It became very apparent to us that hope and healing 
were necessary to reach the, the, to reach the second gen. That hope and healing was essential to many of our experiences because we had been hurt by the church or maybe there wasn't a, a place for us to belong in the church. And so we needed a space for others to, to, to experience hope and healing and know what a church could be. Uh, and again, this was really a helpful insight from Pastor Tommy, our youth pastor at St. Paul campus. Again, stating that second gen felt the hurt, felt trapped in traditional monk churches, uh, but third gen and fourth gen won't ever experience that. And so kiddos, back to you guys. Anyone younger than 10 years old? Can I get a show of hands? Anyone 10 years old or younger in the room here? We've got a couple in here, right? For some of our kids who are 10 years old and under, this has been the only, only expression of church that they've ever known. A place where you can eat ramen noodles in service and drink coffee in service and have snacks in service. This is the only expression that some of our kids have only know, known. So there is no need for them to experience hope and healing in the sense that second gen needed to experience hope and healing. And so it's important for us to know what's important for the next gen, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, so on, so on. Kerry Newhoff is one of my favorite church thinkers and he predicts that churches, who, churches that love their model of doing church more than the mission of church will die. I'll explain this a little bit more. But again, Kerry Newhoff says that churches that love the model more than the mission will die. And so the church's mission is to lead people to know Jesus. And it's important that all churches keep this central, whether again, you're a next gen church, traditional monk church, a white church, black church, whatever it may be. The central mission is to lead people to know Jesus. But the way that we do this can look different. The way that we can do this can look different. And so if I were to borrow a, a parallel from another industry, like say the music industry, the mission of the music industry is to simply get their music out. And over the years, that has happened through different methods. They've had records, they've had eight tracks, they've had cassettes, they've had CDs, we have the MP3s, now we have streaming. And so the method of getting music out is different, but the mission is still the same. For the music industry, it's to just simply get the music out there. It doesn't matter how we do it. You can get, if you prefer vinyls, eight tracks, cassettes, CDs, MP3s, streaming, whatever it is, as long as it's out there. And so similarly, our mission is to lead people to know Jesus, but our method can look different and that's okay. And so we felt like we needed to start thinking about our methods and if they should change and they, if they should reflect the next generation. And so again, like I mentioned, while the second gen experience hurt and, hurt and needed hope and healing, we don't see that to be the case for the next generation and beyond. Now research shows that the next gen desires these things for their faith in their churches. They desire genuine relationships and connections. The next gen daily desire welcoming and inclusive environments. The next gen they desire meaningful spiritual experiences. They desire transparent leadership. They desire a social impact, that the church is doing something to impact our community. The next gen desires engaging in their spirituality. And so we started to consider if these are the things that the next gen desire, what would a mission statement look like that spoke to these needs and desires for the next gen? And so we spent weeks brainstorming. We spent weeks answering these questions and exploring our mission statement for the future. Uh, again, not our past, not our present, but the future. And through God's grace, we think we have something. And so again, River Life's new mission statement is... We are a next-gen monk church experiencing God together. Now, while all this research is helpful and useful for us to understand the next-gen's need, the overarching idea behind thinking ahead is biblical. The concept of passing on, passing on our faith to the next generation is crucial in what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And so if you believe in Jesus, it is crucial for you to pass your faith on to the next generation, whether that be your kids, your nephews, your nieces, or just simply kids in general. So anyone who is younger than you is the next generation. And so biblically, again, it is essential that you pass on your faith to the next generation. In 2 Timothy chapter, verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, Paul describes Timothy, who is one of his disciples, he describes Timothy like this, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois 
and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. That this faith that Timothy had in doing ministry with Paul came from first his grandmother Lois, then his mother Eunice, and then he, Timothy himself, had that faith. Now, we're not saying it's the exact same faith as, as what Timothy's grandmother and mother had, but the concepts and the values and the biblical truths were all the same. Now, if we were to contrast this, in Judges chapter 2, verse 10, this is what it says in the Old Testament about, um, about, about a generation that didn't receive the faith, or didn't, the generation before it did pass the faith. This is what it says in Judges chapter 2. After the whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. And so in the Old Testament, there were plenty of moments where the current generation did not pass the generation down to the next. Uh, to the next. And so the next generation neither knew the Lord nor what the Lord had done for Israel. And the generation who didn't know God because that faith wasn't passed down to them, they ended up doing evil, causing them to experience God's punishment. And so for us, if we fast forward to modern day right now, October 13, 2024, it is absolutely crucial that we pass on our faith to the next generation to experience God's promises, or else they will experience God's they will also experience God's they will experience God's punishment. Earlier we heard Chi read from Psalm 78, chapter 1 through 8, uh, verses 1 through 8, which emphasizes the importance about talking about our faith to the next generation. And so I'm going to read it again. And if you want to follow along, go ahead and turn to page six in your bulletin. And so Psalm 78 verses one through eight says this. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. Verse four. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the laws in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God, and they would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. Now this morning, there are two things I want to highlight from Psalm 78. In verse 4, the author of Psalm 78 makes it clear to not hide God's deeds and words from the next generation. The psalmist writes and tells the people to not hide God's deeds and words from the next generation. And so hiding conveys this idea of intentionally concealing something or destroying any evidences of it. We're told not to hide it. And so if you're doing anything to cover up the good the truth about who God is, who Jesus is, if you're doing anything to try to destroy any evidences of it, the psalmist tells us that's not what we're supposed to do. Don't hide it. If we're not supposed to hide it, what are we supposed to do with it? The psalmist tells us that we're supposed to tell others about it. That's the second thing. We're supposed to tell others about it. Specifically, tell the next generation about it. Telling others can literally mean to keep a tally or a record of it. When you keep a tally of something, it's like the scoreboard. You know who's up. You know who's down. You know the records. Over the last few weeks, I've kept a tally on Facebook of each Minnesota Vikings win. It is a tally reminding me the Vikings are 5-0. and oh. It is a declaration that that is happening and I want you to know about it. Telling the next gen means to declare it, to recount it over and over and over again. And when the psalmist tells the, pe- tells the people to tell these things, it is a reference to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, where he tells the people, pray this prayer. 
tell them about the one true Lord, that God is one. And the Israelites are supposed to pray this prayer a couple times during the day. They were supposed to do this with their family in the public. Telling the next generation again means that you are declaring it, you are recounting it, you want it to be made known. There is an intentional tallying of it. There is intentional, again, record of it. Again, why are we supposed to do this? We're supposed to do this so that the next gen doesn't make the same mistakes that we've made. So that the next generation doesn't make the same mistakes that the generations before us has made. That the next generation doesn't make the same mistakes that our parents, that our grandparents, that our great-grandparents made. Think about a costly mistake that you've made in your lifetime. For the original audience that read Psalm 78, they were reminded that their descendants were stubborn, rebellious, disloyal, and unfaithful, even though they saw God and his miracles, specifically what God had done to free them from Egypt and to get through the, the desert. Do you want your children and your generation to repeat the same mistakes that you experienced or that your parents experienced or that your grandparents experienced? My hope is no. I hope that my children, that my grandchildren, that my great-great-grandchildren don't fall prey to the same mistakes that I've made. So that brings us back to our new mission statement. We are a next-gen monk church experiencing God together. And here are three reasons why we're making this change so that the next-gen doesn't make the same mistakes that we did nor our ancestors. The first is this. When adults keep the church focused on themselves, when, fo- when adults keep the church focused on just adults, we hide God from the, from the next generation. If we worship in ways that are meaningful to us but not the next generation, we hide God from them. If we engage in spiritual exercises we love but don't resonate with our youth or children, we are hiding God from them. When we want the attention, the programming, the events for just us as adults, we hide God from them. Second, we want every kid and every youth to know that they have a place here at River Life. We believe this so strongly that we're willing to redirect the mission of the church to help them to help them experience God more and become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. River Life adults, what kind of church do you want your kids and your grandkids and your nieces and your nephews and the next generation to experience? Do you want a church that's stuck in the past? Or a church that is vibrant, alive, where they encounter God for themselves? This past week, I was over at the North Central District Conference where the churches in our, in, our, uh, in, our, in our district meet and talk about things happening. And, and uh, one thing I just couldn't stop sharing with other pastors was that in our church at River Life here, Brooklyn Park Campus specifically, we have a one-to-one ratio, adults and kids, that for every one adult, there's one kid. Average stat of most churches is a four-to-one ratio. Every four adults, there's one kid. And so what happens when all those adults get older? There's less and less kids in the congregation. What we have here is very unique to what other churches experience or or maybe lack of don't experience. So when I tell that to to, to, to pastors, they're like, that is crazy, one-to-one? And so this is a gift that, again, we have for every one adult, we have one child. Again, we want this to be a place where children are vibrantly thriving so that they will continue to vibrantly thrive in the future. Three, it allows the older generation to model humility and sacrifice for the sake of the younger generations. Older parents, especially immigrants, make tremendous sacrifices for their kids. Unfortunately, church power isn't usually one of them. It's something that sometimes adults don't want to give up. And so by changing our mission statement from one focused on second gen to third gen, We are signaling a change. We, the adults of River Life, are willing to lay down our power, preferences, and privileges so that you, our kids, our youth, our grandkids, can thrive in faith and in the church in the future. 
And so we are a next-gen monk church experiencing God together. Would you just take a second and imagine what it'd be like walking into River Life 10 years from now? 10 years from now, walking through those doors, what would it be like if our kids and grandkids aren't just attending, but leading it? We saw some of our third graders raise their hands that they would be graduating. Imagine them leading our church. I'm going to be pushing, I think, 50 in 10 years. I'm going to feel the aches and the pains. I'm going to feel tired. That we're going to have young, vibrant kids now, adults in the future, leading it. That they're the ones who are serving They're preaching, they're worshiping, they're loving our community with passion and authenticity, maybe in ways much better than what we can do. Imagine the energy in this place where where generations are united in the love of Christ in hopes to make an impact. River Life is not a church for just today. We are a church for tomorrow. We are a church for the next generation. And so as we lean into this new mission, we believe that God is going to do something miraculous among us. We will experience God like never before. We will understand and obey him in ways we haven't before. We will be spiritually formed in community in ways we could never could in isolation. And so would you lean with me into this new mission that we are a next-gen Hmong church experiencing God together? Let me pray for us.